There are those times in life when it might be advantageous for you to anonymize all of your network traffic. I'm Daniel Lowry, and this is What the Pros Know. Okay, so you're looking to anonymize your network traffic. There's a lovely little script that I found on GitHub that can help you do just that. It's called Torghost. Give you a good look at that URL right there. And GitHub is Sussmith Krishnan forward slash Torghost. Right there it is. Uh, and what this does, as you can see here, and it's lovely little readme, TorGhost is an anonymizing script or anonymization script. TorGhost redirects all internet traffic through SOX5 for proxy. DNS requests are also redirected for Tor, thus preventing DNS leaks. And the script also disables unsafe packets exiting the system. Some packets like ping requests can compromise your identity. So this script kind of does just about everything you can think of to anonymize your network traffic. And all you need to do is build and install from the source. Now I'm running the latest version of Kali Linux. And because of that, I have to go with this first option, built from install and source. If you go down below that, it does have alternate methods. Right here, you can see alternate methods, support in previous install script. But we can see that new Kali update is causing a permissions error. So please build and install from source. Not a problem. I should be able to follow the bouncing ball here that they give us, which I've already done the first step, which is git clone this repository. Once I'm done with that, I will CD into the directory. And then if I need to do a little chmod action to make that executable and then run the build sh script. So let's do that. Let's, let's jump in there. I'm going to close my browser because I don't need any more. And if I do an ls, you can see that I have a torghost directory because I did clone that um, repository. If I cd into torghost, I now have all those lovely script one of them being build.sh. We need to run that according to our instructions. I can see that it is a different color, but if you're running a, a mono colored screen or um, you might not see colorization like that. So if you do an ls-l, I can see that install.sh does have the execute bit set. So perfect. I will for, uh, forward slash. I think it does like sudo a lot of times. So I'm gonna sudo just probably about everything here just to be on the safe side. So I'll sudo dot slash build sh. All right, it's working, it's doing its thing. Looks like it's downloading a bunch of stuff. I think it's running in Python. I don't think, I kind of know. I played around with this a little bit. You can see it's uh, downloading Py installer and doing a couple other build dependencies. But once it gets done, we actually, I would hope that this would be the end of it, but it wasn't. We had to do a little tweaking to make this actually run, at least in this version of Kali that I'm running, which is 2020-2, I think it's the dot two, second quarter. All right, so we're almost there, and there we go. It has completed successfully, so that's good. If I do an ls, I can see a couple of new files that are there for me, but like I said, we're not at the end of the game here. We got a couple other uh, extras that we have to throw on the fire here. Let me clear my screen out a little bit. And the next thing we need to do is install pip. For whatever reason, pip is not installed for either Python 3 or Python 2 in this version of Kali, so I will do a sudo apt install pip. Oh, that's not right. It's python pip. If I can python dash pip. There you go. That'll get you to the, to the right spot. Hit yes. And there we go. It's installing. A lot, of, a lot of installing with this, but it's totally worth it at the end. All right. So we got pip installed and pip's going to help us to actually install some modules for Python that we're going to need for this. There is a requirements.txt file in here, but I found that it didn't really work for me, at least in this version of Kali. So I'll do it the old fashioned way and just sudo pip install. The first one we're gonna do is called requests. Let that rock. And there we go, it looks done, excellent. And the next one we're gonna do is called stem, S-T-E-M. Fire that away and installing. Now you might see what I'm seeing here, which is a lot of red error looking stuff, but it should still work anyway, okay? That being said, now more things we need to take care of. We actually need to modify the torghost.py script itself because there's some, some things in there that didn't allow it to work, at least on my system, okay? So I will use nano because it's easy and it is the VLS here. Make sure I'm spelling this correctly. It's going to be this torghost.py file right there. So nano torghost.py. Now I'm just going to do a really quick control W to find um, IP tables. I'll just do tables. 
to get me down to the section I need. And you'll see this section right here that says IP tables rules right there. Inside of there is some, some Python functionality that doesn't quite work very well, at least in my system. So I just had to do a little modification like this Tor UID. That percent %s doesn't work in my system. So I just need to change that to the Debian dash Tor user, which should now be in your system if you follow me step by step throughout this process so far. So real quick, just make that say Debian dash Tor and that should start to work. And then lastly, if you go down to the bottom of this section, it'll have this subprocess dot get output area, right? Where it's looking for this ID of Debian Tor. I don't really need that functionality to show up here. So I'm just gonna comment it out like that. Do a control O and save that and then exit out of my editor. Now we are definitely moving quite along. I think that we are ready to actually use Tor Ghost and see if it will work for us. Let's do some testing first. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna curl uh, IP Monkey. IP Monkey is a service that allows you to see what your internet IP is. So if you're, it's kind of like, what is my IP or IP chicken? All these different sites do the same kind of functionality. I found IP Monkey to work really well for this demonstration purposes. So HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.ipmonkey.com. And I'm going to grep for IP address so that we can just find that single line. It'll give me the whole page back. Hit return, and there you can see it's returning my IP address of 209.251.131.98, okay? That is my legit ISP getting out to the internet IP address, okay? But now we are going to, and like I said, I'm gonna sudo everything, right? So sudo Python, I think it requires it actually. Uh, Python, it is torghost.py, and I'm gonna do a dash dash start, and then I'm going to do capital T Tor Ghost. So we're doing start Tor Ghost, okay? Hit that, we can see that it is fetching the current IP. It's actually trying to connect to the Tor service as we speak. Should take just a few seconds, so be patient with it. And once it makes that connection and gets that right connection, we should be good to go. And again, it should just take a few seconds. And you can see now I have a current IP of 185.220.101.142. But does IP Monkey see it that way? Well, we'll see. We'll do that curl IP Monkey. I'll go back in and uh, I'll hit return. And we see that it does actually show the same Tor address that I actually got from Tor Ghost. Now this can be really helpful if you're doing things like bug bounties and your, um, your IP gets blacklisted in some way, shape or form. So if you get burned in any way and you're trying to do some um, security research, this can be super helpful. I found it for myself anyway. And you never know what other kind of cool things that you can figure out to do with something like that. To make it stop to go back to normal land, probably an interesting little fact for you, is to do sudo, and I'll do python torghost.py, and then dash dash stop torghost. You can see that it's fetching the current IP yet again. It should go back to my ISP's internet protocol address, which is right there. We see that it's changed should be back in action. So there you go. That's how you use Tor Ghost to anonymize all of your network traffic. If you found this useful, definitely check out our playlist for more What the Pros Know and subscribe to our YouTube channel.